Okay, everybody, calm down. Calm down. Marcus is about to speak. <laughs> this is going to be fun. When there is an election, the first thing people do is start a smear campaign to make the other person look bad, right? Well, you're voting. You're voting with your pocketbook, which sweetener, for example, you want with your food, and people are choosing more healthy, natural alternatives like erythritol. And the sugar industry is losing hundreds of millions of dollars. And guess what? A new study just happened to come out saying erythritol is unhealthy and causes heart problems. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's look at that. Well, what is erythritol? It's something the body produces. Yes, the body produces erythritol on its own. Erythritol is naturally found in some vegetables and fruits like watermelon. And I uh, never heard of anybody getting heart problems from eating watermelon. It's been used since 1870 and tested over a hundred years with zero side effects. In fact, it's classified as an antioxidant. When someone has oxidative stress in their body, the body naturally starts producing erythritol to counter it. Honey, for example, is much worse because of the high amount of fructose and calories. It spikes insulin and erythritol has zero calories, zero sugar. It does not cause gas or bloating like other sugar alcohols do. And it's a natural substance found in fruits, plants, and again, the human body. There is no change in blood insulin or sugar levels. There's no effect on cholesterol or triglycerides or other biomarkers. And over 90% of erythritol that you swallow is not even absorbed in the body. It just passes right through. For people who are overweight with diabetes or other issues like metabolic syndrome, erythritol is an excellent alternative to sugar. And unlike other sugars, erythritol does not feed bacteria, like in the mouth, for example. Multiple studies have shown erythritol actually reduces dental plaque and cavities. That's pretty cool. Multiple studies on metabolism and toxicity have been performed over the last hundred years and despite long-term feeding of high amounts of erythritol, no negative effects have been discovered in over a century of testing. Links to these studies I will post below for your perusing pleasure. Okay, so let's get on with this new study. They gave people an insane amount of erythritol, like 30 to 45 grams, that's over half a cup a day, and what's even crazier is they didn't even look at the actual erythritol consumption, only erythritol levels found in the blood. And again, the body makes its own erythritol, especially when the body is unhealthy. Remember, it's classified as an antioxidant. So because they measured higher levels of erythritol in unhealthy people, they want you to believe that erythritol is causing the problem. This is called reverse causality association, and that's not how science works. That's like saying ambulances cause car accidents because wherever there's a car accident, well, there's an ambulance. It's insane. It's like pouring water down someone's throat and, and, and they drown and then they say water is bad for you because water was found in the body and the person died. Look at the wording of the study. They say erythritol is associated with an increased risk of heart attack. It's like saying ambulances are associated with car accidents. Yes, they are associated with car accidents, but they don't cause the accident. It's completely and totally taken out of context. Three quarters of the participants in that study had coronary heart disease or high risk factors. These people were very, very sick, ready to die. Over 40% of them had some form of myocardial infarction. Over 15% were in heart failure. Over 70% had hypertension and many at high levels of type 2 diabetes. People like this have what's called an overactive pentose phosphate pathway. And erythritol is endogenously produced by the pentose phosphate pathway. So their bodies were already naturally producing erythritol in an effort to counteract their health issues, just like ambulances and rescue vehicles show up at an accident site. Just like blood platelets and leukocytes show up when you have a cut to help heal the wound. Does that mean that platelets and collagen cause the wound they are associated with? Of course not. Countless studies have shown erythritol reduces HbA1c, improves insulin sensitivity, fights bacteria, reduces cavities, and it's a powerful antioxidant. Testing something in vitro, meaning in a petri dish, is not the same as in vivo, like looking at something inside of a living organism. The moment you take something out of the body, it starts breaking down and oxidizing, so any data gathered this way is taken completely out of context. Countless studies over the last hundred years actually found the exact opposite to be true. It helps the body. It doesn't hurt it. I mean, think about it. 
Why do you think the body starts producing more erythritol when someone has a heart condition? The body doesn't try to accelerate the illness, it tries to fight it. It wants to stay alive. It tries to compensate for people's bad diet and lifestyle choices as best as it can with whatever is available. The study that we have here is a correlational misinterpretation made to purposely scare people for the same reasons like the meat industry would say uh, apples and broccoli are bad for you. This is just a bastardization of fact just to cause a wave on social media for some kind of gain to the industry that funded this study, which they even say, the study only demonstrates a correlation, not a cause and effect relationship. More research is still needed. So they totally admit the correlation, but not the cause. And the amount of erythritol that they gave these people, again, is like 30 to 45 grams. That's an insane amount. That's over half a cup of the stuff they gave every day to people who already had clogged arteries and heart conditions. And nobody does that. I mean, come on. Anything taken on naturally at high levels can cause problems, like including oxygen and water. Like the body needs salt, for example. Salt is good, you need a bit of it, but a half a cup of the stuff can kill you. I mean, even healthy things should be used responsibly and in moderation. Don't have erythritol sweetened food and drink all day long for breakfast and lunch and dinner and erythritol snacks in between. I mean, that's not natural. A smoothie or a treat is fine, but not everything you put in your mouth all day long. I mean, that's common sense. There are all kinds of published scientific studies showing how safe erythritol is, and I'll post a number of those down below. So I hope this helped clear things up a bit because there's so much fear mongering going on, on the internet nowadays, it's enough to drive anyone crazy. Um, I want to try to help clear things up, calm you down and make your day a little easier to handle. So <clears throat> relax, have a nice day and I'll see you again in a few days with something else that'll make you feel good. All right? All right. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.